I'm gonna love you. Hey everybody, welcome to Coffee with Brian. Um, today, as you can see, I'm working on one of my drawing projects. I'm actually working on drawing this right here, this psychedelic cat. Pretty cool, man. Well, as you can tell, I'm going to show you up close here. I've already got the black done for the most part. I've got to go back in and put some shadowing and stuff in, but... I'm working on, uh, there's actually like three shades of blue in this. I'm actually working on one of the darker blues right now. And today, I've got some questions on how I do my blending. Um, this is actually what I use, Mineral Spirits. And a blending brush. As you can tell, at the end of it, I don't know if you can see, this is what I use. For scumbing and uh, blending. But I'm going to go ahead just real quick here and show you. I've already got, as you can tell, I've already gotten the eye part and this part here. And you can tell from here to here how this blending works. See, it makes it, it really fills in and blends it and makes it real buttery looking. Makes it very smooth. And then as you can tell up here where I've laid down just a base coat of collar, I'm going to show you how I blend that. And you'll see, you'll notice that this up here will start to turn like this down here. And then I'll go back and I'll add another layer of collar. And then I'll go back and I'll do this blending again to give it that buttery smooth effect. Now you can put as many layers as you want on this. Um... As long as you don't flatten out the tooth of the paper. Once you flatten out the tooth of the paper from like uh, doing burnishing, you know, where you where you would use, uh, let me show you here, where you would use something like this, one of these paper blenders, or if you really get in there to blend, um, what you're doing is you're burnishing the collar and you're filling in, if you can see up here, you see where you still got some white showing through? on this blue up here but if you notice down here you still see some but it's not as much down here as it was up there and once i do the second layer of collar here and i go back in and blend then you'll notice that most of that white disappears and that's one of the keys when you're drawing um unless you're wanting to purposely leave some white in certain areas like you'll notice on here um I'm going to purposely leave some of this white and go back in with uh, the white. Um, well, let me show you. Hold on a minute. All right. As you can tell, with this one that I've done, um, Gremlin, see if you can see, I've had uh, two or three layers of black on there. But after it was done, I went in with my white. And, I mean, you got to do it pretty hard to get it to show up. And you might have to do it two or three times. But as you can see, you see some white th showing up through the black. Where I've done some white elements of the fur. And also, I want to show you something here. Alright, you see right there on this eye where you've got that glare? That's what happens when you do a burnishing. On these eyes, um, I did do partial burnishing on them. I did the mineral spirit blending, but I also did partial burnishing. And this is the outcome that you get. You see that glare from the light? That's what happens when you have a burnish effect. The burnishing um, kind of gives it like a, it just smears and really forces that pigment into the tooth of the paper. and But it, it glosses it over, so it gives like a burnished effect. And when light is shining directly on it, yeah, you can even see it there because I've got the light ahead, uh, above me. You can see as I turn it, you get that, see where you get that burnishing effect partially? Well, that's what happens when you flatten out the tooth of your paper from burnishing. So I try to use the mineral spirits as much as possible. And uh, I try not to push too hard with my scumbing brush, my blender, because I don't want to flatten out that tooth. Um, because I may need to apply, you know, two, three more layers. And then after that, I've got to go back in. And as you'll see, 
with this one you'll see some white in here in this blue and uh, all throughout here you'll see white accents i'm going to have to go back in afterwards with my white and really put that white in there and when i do that that's going to end up flattening out the tooth of the paper because i'm really going to have to press pretty hard to get that white to show up through there um, some people will use an exacto knife um, to try to scratch through the pigment to uh, to do that other people will use something like this like an eraser pencil or an eraser to erase the pigment but what I found out is from using these mineral spirits and uh, a brush you get a very desired effect you get a very buttery smooth effect and blending the blending is just simply amazing well at least with faber castell pencils now with the prismacolor because they're a wax core pencil i noticed that the mineral spirit method doesn't quite work the same with those uh faber castells are an oil ah, oil core pencil so that's why your mineral spirits will help to kind of I don't know if it melts it or but it does something it reacts with the oil and it just really gives a real buttery smooth effect when you're drawing but i've also noticed the downside is is once you do a couple of layers and you put the mineral spirit and you blend these don't work so well anymore at least not for me um, if you know of another way out there leave it in the comments below and i'll give it a try you know you, you you're always you always room to learn you know so anyway let me show you i'm gonna go blend all these other spots and i'm gonna show you how i do it and uh maybe you want to give it a try on your own drawings so let me go ahead and put this exacto knife back over there all right so what i do is i just dip my brush in the turpentine and then well you can't really tell let me move it over here little bit and I kind of just get the excess off and then as you can tell I've got a brush over here and what I'll do is I'll just kind of lightly get the excess off the brush and then that silver part there I'll rub it off to make sure I don't get any drips on my drawing and then I'll take and we'll just do down here to begin with and I'll take it and just kind of lightly push it around and you see how it's starting to blend in. Now you're going to have some fluid that will push out. But don't worry it does dry. And you won't really be able to see that anymore. I just kind of lightly push it. You can hear like a scratching sound. Well what I'm doing is I'm using the bristles of the brush. To just lightly push in that paint. And as you can see. You get a very buttery smooth effect through here. And you can't really see a lot of the white anymore. So we'll pick up some more turpentine. Well, this ain't turpentine. I use turpentine for spray paint. I get them confused. Get the excess off. And we'll start working right here. And we just want to push that collar. Very lightly push that collar in. Remember, you don't want to push too hard. Because you don't want to flatten out the tooth of the paper. And fill that in. Because once you do that. It's really hard to get any more layers on there. As long as you have some tooth left on your paper. You can get. Quite a few layers on there. You can get as many layers as you want. As long as you don't flatten out that tooth. So I'm just very lightly. I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure at all on this. I'm just letting the mineral spirits do their job. And they're kind of reacting with the oil core, the pigment, and it's just kind of pushing it around within that, within the tooth of the paper to fill in those little gaps. Get it off there, and then we'll go up here, we'll work on this part. Just kind of push that pigment around, and where I get to the blacks, black parts here. I kind of blend it in with them to kind of give a seamless transition there. As you can see, the sound of the brush, it really sounds like I'm pushing hard, but I'm really not. I'm putting 
a little more Bob Ross used to have a saying, you know, two hairs and some air or something like that. I can't really remember. I'm doing a little harder than that, but not much, not much. It's just the tooth of the paper and the bristles of the brush is what you're hearing, that scratching noise, but it's really not, I'm not pushing down very hard at all. A little more than two hairs and some hair. I'll put it at that point. <laughs> All right, then we'll go in here. Now, some people will do a circular motion. I don't know. It's personal preference. I like myself to just kind of a back and forth. I don't know why. I. It's how I got used to doing it, this method. Um, you may do it differently. You know, it just depends on the artist and what they get used to. And it really is personal preference. You know, what you get used to, so. I've got some stuff on my brush here. I want to get that off there. All right, now I want to show you real quick. You can see between this area and this area, you see how it's starting to blend and how it's getting that smooth buttery effect. That's the outcome I'm wanting. And you can tell that you see the white in here coming through. You don't see it so much here. Once I go back and put the next layer on top of this, you're going to see it even less. And that's a big key to drawing is... Um, you know, the less white coming through, the less of the paper coming through where your pigment is, the more realistic you can make it look, or at least I've heard a lot of artists say that. You know, and I think they're partially right because, you know, it does tend to make it, give it a more realistic effect. You know, like I said, unless you're purposely trying to leave some of that... Uh, some of the white from the paper or the tan or the gray from the paper, if you're purposely trying to leave some of it through, you know, then, you know, that may be what you want to do. Yeah, we're starting to get a really, really nice effect there. And I'm not sure if I told you or not, with this drawing, um, I'm using the Polychromos, the Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. Um, I have the, I believe it's a 120 count set. Um, I also have the Prismacolors, and I have some Derwent's. Um, I also have the Prismacolor Varathans for like really fine detail. They really hold a pretty long point on them. Um, but usually my favorite go-to is Faber-Castells. You know, because like I said, I prefer with blending to use the Mineral Spirits. Um, because the outcome it, to me is a more desired outcome, you know. I really think it, it really gives it a really smooth, smooth effect. And that's, you know, that's what I'm looking for with my, with, with my particular form of art anyway, you know. Um, when you're drawing, you may want a desi other desired effect, you know. But like I said, it's really personal preference. I have pretty much any blender you could think of here. Um, you know, like I said, I've got the, uh, well, actually, <laughs> I was wrong. I showed you this one. This is the Faber-Castell eraser pencil. This is a Prismacolor colorless, colorless blender, which sometimes I'll use those. And then 
I also have the Prismacolor alcohol blender. Well, I assume this is alcohol. I don't really know what's in it, but it's got a it's got a big end, and then it's got smaller end for fine detail. And then, of course, I have multiple blender sticks, you know, all over the place. And then, of course, I also have regular Prismacolor erasers. I have kneaded erasers, as you can see. So, I've got just about any blending method that I could want, but this is pretty much my go-to is the mineral spirit. You know, some of the others are perfectly fine. It's just, I don't know, I got used to using the mineral spirits. And I really prefer it. And I'll tell you, some of my earlier YouTube videos, um, if you look, you'll notice that, like, the portrait I did of my mom and uh, stepfather, the portrait I did of my brother and his husband, um, they, they were good um, because I was using, you know, Prismacolor Colorless Blender stuff like that, and the burnishing method. But in my opinion, you know, if I'd have used the mineral spirits, I think I could have got it to look just a little bit better. In my opinion, um, if I had to pick one, I would pick the oil collar pencils or the oil core pencils and the, uh, oh, make sure it's odorless mineral spirits or you're going to pay the price. You're going to be smelling it. And a uh, blending brush. So I really prefer that method. Um, I think if I would have done the others, I think it would have got that really smooth buttery effect. And, and I think for like animals and portraits, especially, I think this method works really, really well. Um, you know, maybe not so much for others, you know, but I, the main thing I draw is animals and portraits, you know? So for what I draw, you know, this works amazing. You know, I love it. So, anyway, oh, let me show you what we got now. As you can tell, it looks a lot smoother, doesn't it? You don't have as much white showing up up here. It's very, it's a lot more blended. And now I'm going to go back in and uh, with, ah, this drawing table got a lip down here. It's hard to get my pencil. I'm going to go back in with my blue, which has a green hue. Um, and the reason I picked that is because if you look on here, you'll notice you've got a patch of green right here. And, well, actually, that's about, no, you got a little bit up here and a little bit here. But I kind of wanted to go with the green hue to add kind of a transition between, because if you see the picture, You'll notice you've got you've got blue, you've got green, you've got orange, you've got pink, you've got a couple shades of blue, you've got black, you've got white, you know. Oh, you've even got a little, might be yellow right there, a little yellow maybe. And so I tried to pick a blue that had a greenish hue to it to kind of add to the transition of colors, you know. So anyway. I'm going to hop off here. I just kind of wanted to show you all a little bit of how I blend. And, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, if you have any other questions, just shoot me a, shoot me a message. Uh, put it in the comments down below. And, uh, here before long, you'll be seeing this as a video. You can watch me do it from, uh, inception to finish. And hopefully, like I said, this is what I'm drawing. Hopefully it comes out pretty close to this. You know, I'm not trying to get it exact, you know, because I'm, there's this thing called artist license, you know, artist interpretation. I'm going to kind of use that a little bit on this. You know, I don't like to do things perfectly exact because um, then, well, it's just copying, but I kind of want to add my own little 
flair a little bit to it, you know, my own little interpretation. So, give me a little coffee. So, I'm going to hop off here, y'all. And, uh, yeah, I'll bring you something again real soon. I love y'all. Y'all be good to each other.